a thread by Carlos Osuida. I'll talk about Syria. I've already written about Libya. Obama did enough real things. This is fantasy. Smokeless fire 69 <laughs> tweets. Syrian war was a failed operation started by Obama. He destabilized the country and brought in jihadists in the guise of rebels. The whole operation was a lie and Tulsi was right in opposing it. Same with Libya. Anyone that says otherwise is suspect and untrustworthy in my eyes. This is fantasy. All that matters is that President Trump has changed our role in the world forever. In reality, Obama built on Condoleezza Rice and Nancy Pelosi's efforts to strengthen Bashar al-Assad. Rice was convinced that we needed Iran and Assad for the Middle East peace process, despite the fact that Assad derived his power from being a state sponsor of terrorism. A Syrian dissident described Assad perfectly. He's the arsonist who sells water to the fire department. By forever causing trouble in the Middle East, Assad kept himself in the regional spotlight and was appeased endlessly. Obama's approach to Assad. State.gov, quote, In early 2009, the United States began to review its Syria policy in light of changes in the country and the region, leading to an effort to engage with Syria and find areas of mutual interest, reduce regional tensions, and promote Middle East peace. Even more appeasement. Syria had put down several uprisings with unchecked savagery. The idea that Obama imported jihadists is ludicrous. The Syrian civil war began on March 15, 2011, when Assad's Mukhabarat and the Syrian Arab army opened fire on protesters demanding more freedom. This time, the savagery didn't work, so Assad upped the ante in terms of violence. He sent in the Shabiha, ghosts to kidnap, torture, and murder protesters. Look at those ridiculous arms. They're injecting stuff in there. Assad had always allowed Sunni terrorists to use Syria as a highway, rest stop, workshop, training ground, exactly the way Iraq did and Iran does. Dictators always think they can control the monsters they create. Ask the Democrats how that worked out for them. Everything in the Middle East comes down to sectarianism. Assad is an Alawite, and so were the Shabiha. When they began massacring Sunnis, the terrorists who were already in Syria turned against him, and he found that his crap army couldn't handle them, especially after all the defections. By 2011, Sunni terrorists had well over 30 years' worth of combat experience. Assad had also given shelter to Iraqi army and intelligence officers who fled Iraq after the fall of Saddam. Assad and Saddam's political party is called the Baths. It's a, militarily, it's a militantly nationalist party that strives to create a unified Arab empire by force. The Ba'ath Party is entirely centralized, collectivist, and controlled by an absolute dictator. The founders of Ba'athism were Zaki al-Arsuzi and Michel Aflaq. Aflaq gradually became disillusioned with communism and formed a movement based on the ideas of the Syrian Social Nationalist Party. Baathism is indistinguishable from Nazism. What most people don't know is that Iraqi Baathism was not secular. It was Muslim, since it regarded Islam as a purely Arab nationalist religion. Islam was a national heritage that could unite all Arabs from Hoover.org, the legacy of Saddam's Islam.
In 1991, Saddam became Islamist and jihadist. He put Allahu Akbar on the Iraqi flag, and beginning in 1999, he trained over 40,000 international terrorists in three camps. He also created Fedayeen Saddam in 1995, irregular forces named after the Ismaili Shia Hashashin, Order of Assassins. They were called Fedayeen, which meant those willing to sacrifice themselves for God. All captured Iraqi documents have been translated, and they show that Saddam had extremely well-documented links to, his, to jihadist terrorist groups, including Al-Qaeda, from FAS.org. For example, at the request of Osama bin Laden, Saddam sent operators of the Iraqi Military Intelligence Special Branch Unit 999 to Afghanistan to train Al-Qaeda in the manufacture and use of poison gas. From the New Yorker, the CIA and the Pentagon take another look at Al-Qaeda and Iraq. Unit 999 from FAS.org, link in the thread. All the Iraqi military and intelligence officials who Assad took in were jihadist Nazis. These Iraqis became the military leaders of the Islamic State's direct precursor, the Islamic State of Iraq, ISI, formed on October 13th, 2006. The direct precursor of ISI was founded by Jordanian Abu Musab al-Zarqawi in Afghanistan of May 1999. The original name was Jama'at al-Tawid wa'al-Jihad, the Organization of Monotheism and Jihad, JMT. JMT was created in order to kill moderate Muslims, apostates and heretics, and exterminate the Shia Muslims. Osama bin Laden funded the training camp of JMT. The reason JMT went to Iraq was that the Iranians wanted to start a sectarian war. So did al-Zarqawi. In Iraq, JMT became Al-Qaeda in Iraq, AQI. The Iranians created death squads from the Shia Badr organization. They went after the Sunni former members of Saddam's military. U.S. Army officials say that they detained Badr death squads, but the death squads were ordered released by American flag officers who told them this stuff has to play itself out. So Americans also prevented the Iraqis from stopping the death squads. And that's how terrorists, Iran, and the U.S. caused the Iraqi civil war, which cost the lives of 4,400 Americans. We eventually defeated ISI, Islamic State in Iraq, but Obama pulled out our troops by December 2011, allowing ISI to immediately reconstitute itself. By that time, the Syrian civil war was in full swing. The jihadists were already there, having been brought in by Bashar al-Assad in 2003 and 2004. He allowed al-Qaeda to be in Syria, and he'd, be, he'd given shelter to the military commanders of ISI. The head of ISI was Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. In August of 2011, al-Baghdadi sent nine Syrian and Iraqi jihadis to Syria to meet up with al-Qaeda representatives. Together, they formed Jabhat al-Nusra li Ali Asham, the al-Nusra Front. Nusra became the most powerful jihadist organization in Syria. It recruited jihadists from all over the world. On April 8, 2013, al-Baghdadi formed the Islamic State of Iraq and al-Sham, ISIS, or the Islamic State. Al-Sham means Syria. So Assad helped create the Islamic State. Guess who thwarted the entire plan? The people Tulsi Gabbard hates, the Saudis. The emir of the al-Nusra Front is Abu Mohammed al-Julani, a man with no background. We captured him in Iraq and held him for three years, but released him without explanation. Here's what he looked like 
at the time. He speaks classical Arabic with a Syrian accent. Although he was said to be the number two of ISI, he was released by the U.S. and Iraq. He broke with the Islamic State immediately, declared his allegiance to Al-Qaeda, and began destroying jihadist organizations in Syria. Then, on July 29, 2016, al-Julani split with Al-Qaeda. He gives the occasional jihadist sermon, but he never acts on them. Of all the attacks claimed by or attributed to al-Julani's organization, now called Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, HTS, not a single one is 100% unambiguous. All have multiple questions that make them impossible to say for certain that they even happened. Even the kidnapping of UN peacekeepers resulted in no deaths or injuries, we simply don't know what's real, except for the attacks on jihadists. The only thing I can tell you for sure is that HTS uses unidentified advanced weaponry. This is a video of Islamic State terrorists ambushed from behind by Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, HTS. All the terrorists were killed instantly by a wall of bullets. The video was recovered from the dead cameraman. The bullets, part one. The standard military load for tracers is one tracer every five rounds. So add four more bullets to every tracer you see. Easily over a hundred bullets hit these guys simultaneously. They were all dead on their feet. HTS cleared all of Northwest Syria of jihadists from MiddleEastEye.net. Coups on allies, HTS rids Syria's Idlib of opponents. All the experts said al-Julani was simply consolidating power. They forget what former Saudi National Security Advisor General Anwar Eshki, retired, said to the Wall Street Journal on August 21st, 2015, in a piece titled, The Saudis' Reply to Iran's Rising Danger. He said, quote, I believe Daesh will be like Pac-Man, Eat all the terrorists until it becomes one big terrorist. Then we can destroy them. End quote. Remember, the Al Nusra Front was created by the Islamic State, so the Saudis told us what they were going to do. Mohammed Al Julani says that HTS will put down its arms and become a political party. <laughs> that means HTS as jihadists will be destroyed. Al-Julani is a Saudi agent, no doubt whatsoever. And Saudi commandos took over Al-Nusra, HTS, killing all the jihadis it had recruited. The flypaper strategy lured them all to one place and kill them. The combat videos are worthless. The only thing we know is real is that nobody, Syria, Russia, the Arab coalition, the U.S., carried out absolutely verified airstrikes on HTS. They traveled at night with their lights on. Tulsi Gabbard isn't fit to shine Mohammed bin Salman's shoes. I knew all of this would happen. I've said on this platform that everything changed in October of 2015. The Saudis and Israel announced their alliance on June 4th, 2015. The Saudis said that General Anwar Eshki is a private citizen, but that's a technicality, true and irrelevant. From the Atlantic, Israel and Saudi Arabia, togetherish at last. When did Trump announce his presidential run? June 6th, 2015. When did Trump begin working with the Saudis? In 1980, at the latest. 
as far as I know, I am the only person in the Western world who tried to find Trump's earliest connections to the House of Saud. Tulsi Gabbard is an idiot, a child, a lying scumbag. God knows how many wars she would have started. They would have been massively bloody. Trump is a peacemaker. He's a builder. They never destroy. I will be the greatest president that God ever created.